Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. The mindset that we bring to any situation plays a key part in overcoming challenges and really enjoying our unique paths in life. On Thoughtful Thursdays, I like to explore emotional topics that are relevant to CRNAs and other providers. I think of this as my therapy, and I hope you learn some tips and tricks that you can use along your own journey. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today, and now on with the show. Welcome to Thoughtful Thursdays on the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones. And I typically start these episodes off with a quote that gets me thinking, but today I actually have four of them. Mark Twain once said, never put off till tomorrow what may be done the day after tomorrow just as well. Charles Dickens said, my advice is never do tomorrow what you can do today. Procrastination is the thief of time. Gerald Vaughn once said, procrastination is something best put off until tomorrow. And finally, Christopher Parker once said, Procrastination is like a credit card. It's a lot of fun until you get the bill. So if you couldn't tell already, we're going to talk today about procrastination. Now, why did I choose this topic? Well, because frankly, I kept delaying writing this week's show because I couldn't actually think of a topic. And because I didn't have a topic in mind, I could feel myself dreading sitting down to actually write the show. So I kept putting it off and putting it off. And it's been bugging me for the last few days. So I finally decided to just sit down and try to put something down on the page. And what came to mind? Well, procrastination, of course. We all do it to some extent. Many of us have put off projects until the night before they're due or delayed doing chores around the house. But the real question is, is procrastination always a bad thing? And if not, how do we manage it effectively? It's certainly been drilled into us that procrastination is a bad thing. But historically, The Greeks and Romans generally regarded procrastination pretty highly. The wisest leaders would sit around and think and not actually make decisions until they absolutely had to. The idea that procrastination is bad started in the Puritanical era with Jonathan Edwards' sermon against procrastination, followed by the American embrace of work ethics that required immediate and diligent action. But like I said before, procrastination is universal. We always have more things to do than we could possibly do, so we always have to make choices. Recent studies have shown that managing delay is actually an important tool for people to have. The question isn't whether we are procrastinating, it's whether we are procrastinating well. History is littered with stories of procrastination, both good and bad. Leonardo da Vinci famously delayed the completion of his masterpiece, The Mona Lisa. I mean, it took him years. But by taking his time with the painting, da Vinci was able to experiment with new techniques and ideas, resulting in a work of art that is still revered today. On the other hand, the story of the construction of the Sydney Opera House is an example of negative procrastination. The project, which was initially estimated to cost $7 million and take four years to complete, ended up taking over 14 years and costing over $100 million due to those repeated delays and setbacks. So. I want to get into some statistics here. According to a survey conducted by the American Psychological Association, 20% of adults in the U.S. identify as chronic procrastinators. Now, that's a significant number of people who struggle with procrastination on a regular basis. But even among those who don't identify as chronic procrastinators, occasional procrastination is still a common occurrence. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Organizational psychologist Adam Grant claims there's a sweet spot in moderate procrastination. According to him, moderate procrastination can give your brain time to mull over a task or problem, creating space for greater creativity and innovative ideas. Grant believes this is the primary work zone of innovators and original thinkers. Of course, procrastination takes different shapes as well. In general, there are two types. 
active and passive. With active procrastination, you realize that you're delaying one thing in order to do another thing. Perhaps you're avoiding vacuuming the house because you're shopping for groceries instead. Passive procrastination, on the other hand, is essentially just sitting around doing nothing. And obviously, that's not great. So what are the potential benefits and drawbacks of procrastination? On the one hand, procrastination can actually provide some people with a short-lived sense of relief from the pressure of a task. For other people, the adrenaline rush of working under a tight deadline can be motivating too. On the other hand, procrastination can lead to increased stress, anxiety, and even physical health problems. It can also negatively impact our relationships and professional lives if we consistently fail to meet deadlines. So how can we manage moderate procrastination effectively? Here are some tips and tricks. Number one, break tasks down into smaller, more manageable chunks. I mean, we've kind of gone over this one before, but this can make the task feel less overwhelming and easier to tackle. I always think about the children's book, Matilda, and the little boy who was forced to eat a whole chocolate cake in front of the entire school. It looked impossible at first, but he kept taking bites, and as he went along, he gained the momentum needed to finish. Number two, set specific achievable goals for each day or week. This can help you stay on track and avoid falling behind. I found that setting specific blocks of time for different tasks can really help here. Sure, you'll have to make adjustments until you get the hang of it, but the feelings of accomplishment after a productive day are definitely worth it. Number three, eliminate distractions. Turn off your phone or social media notifications while you are working on a task. This is really hard because it feels like the world is constantly begging for our attention. Figuring out what works for you and your particular situation here is important. Number four, use positive self-talk. Instead of beating yourself up for procrastinating, focus on the progress you've made and the steps you can take to continue moving forward. Now, this is much easier said than done for some of us who struggle with positive self-talk in the first place. It can feel a bit hollow if you're not really leaning into it, but practice makes progress in this area of our lives and it's totally worth it to feel better about yourself. Procrastination is a common struggle for many of us, but it doesn't always have to be a source of stress and anxiety. By understanding the potential benefits and drawbacks of procrastination and implementing effective management strategies, we can learn to work more efficiently and effectively. For more information on procrastination and time management, check out the links in the show notes and the following books. Wait, The Art and Science of Delay by Frank Portnoy. This University of San Diego professor claims that when faced with a decision, we should assess how long we have to make it and then wait until the last possible moment to do so. He provides real-life examples from the world around us, from Lehman Brothers to sports, comedy, medicine, military strategy, and even dating. Next is Solving the Procrastination Puzzle, a concise guide to strategies for change. Now, this book was written by eminent procrastination researcher Tim Peichel, and it explains why we procrastinate, followed by how to overcome it given the reasons we do it in the first place. And finally, The Now Habit, a strategic program for overcoming procrastination and enjoying guilt-free play by Neil Fiore, a licensed psychologist. Inside, he outlines a system to help you learn how to get things done in a timely manner while eliminating the stress and anxiety caused by them so that you can increase your free time without feeling guilty about it. And that's going to do it for today's show. Make sure you check out the show notes for helpful links, and if you enjoyed what you heard, make sure you hit subscribe and leave us a five-star review. I'd love to hear what you thought of the show, and you can put that right in your review. And if you're interested in passive income opportunities with tax-advantaged real estate, visit my website at www.oncallinvestments.com or reach out to me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Until next time, stay safe and take care of each other out there. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. 
You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page, where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.